everyone, and welcome to another exciting season of Reading Link Challenge. What is Reading Link Challenge? It's an award-winning program created by librarians at the Fraser Valley Regional Library. Students work in teams of up to six people to read books and answer questions in a quiz program. This friendly competition shakes down in three rounds. Round one features a challenge between the various teams at your school. Round two, the winning team from your school will compete against students from other schools in your community. Round three is the Vancouver Island wide finale where the winning teams from each community go head to head. Are you excited yet? Well, let's meet the team of librarians who will be bringing the challenges to your schools this year. Kicking us off is... Hi, I'm Allison. I work at the Comox Library. Hi, Allison. I'm Jeff. I work at Gabriel Island Branch. And I'm so excited to see Gabriel Elementary School join the Reading Link Challenge. And I'm Julie. I'm at the Nanaimo North Branch. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I work at the Port Alberni Library. I'm really excited to see even more schools in Port Alberni participating this year. Yay! Hi, I'm Lee. I work at the Harborfront Library in Nanaimo. And I'm really excited for Cover Copy Challenge again this year. Go art classes. Hi, I'm Narielle. I work in the Cowichan branch. Hi, I'm Natalie and I work at the Courtney Library and I just want to give a big shout out to all of our Comox Valley schools. Yay! And I am Sheila and I work at the Harborfront branch in downtown Nanaimo with Lee. And welcome to another year of Reading League Challenge. Uh and I'm Virginia, and I'm coming to you from the Sydney North Saanich Library. Uh, this is our fourth year of Reading Link Challenge, and we can't wait to see you all there. We're looking forward to seeing you in March and April. Happy reading! Everyone, I'm happy to share with you today about The Case of a Missing Auntie, A Mighty Muskrat Mystery by Michael Hutchinson. This is the second mystery in this series. The, in the first story, the Mighty Muskrat's four cousins from Windy Lake named Chickadee, Otter, Atim, and Samuel help solve the mystery of a missing archaeologist in their community. In this story, the Mighty Muskrats are taking a break and heading to the big city to visit the exhibition fair. But there's still a mystery they have to solve. Before they leave, Chickadee learns about Grandpa's missing younger sister, who was taken away when she was from her family when she was little. Now, with bullies, red tape, and confusing bus travel, Against them, the muskrats are in for some big adventures. Will they trust the wrong people? Will they get into trouble? Will they be able to find out about Grandpa's little sister? Will Otter get enough money to visit, see the concert that he's been really waiting for? All this you'll find out by reading The Case of the Missy Auntie. Hello, I am here to tell you about this book, Book, Uncle and Me by Uma Krishna Swami. Uh, but before I do that, I have a question for you. Do any of you have free little libraries in your communities? Do you know the ones I mean where you're walking down maybe a street in your neighborhood and on somebody's lawn, they've put a little box and it has a whole bunch of books in and you can put a book in there if you're finished reading a book or you can take a book home, you know, look through the box and take a book home and read it and then donate it back to the free library. 
Yeah, they're popping up all over the world. So I bet some of you have seen them in your communities. In fact, I took, I made a little slideshow. Let me just share that with you. Here we go. Yes. So this uh, picture, I took this one actually this morning as I was walking around Nanaimo and I came across this little uh, take a book, return a book box. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. But yeah, they are all over the world. Um, this one, for example, is in the United States. And if you look really closely, you can tell that this one is made out of a old doll's house. In fact, they've left the stairs of the doll's house in there. And you can see there's a doll on the stairs reading a teeny tiny little book there. And maybe somebody upstairs as well. I think I can see a teeny tiny pair of feet there. So that's kind of a neat one. And then this one is in Ireland. Um, so two little libraries there. One that looks like with adult books and then one with kids books. And the kids one certainly looks exciting um, with the sideways shelves and the bright colors and that. And then this one, I wonder if you can guess where this one is. This one is at the South Pole. So there's even a free little library at the South Pole. And yeah, the book I'm talking about, as I said, it's called Book Uncle and Me by Uma Krishnaswamy. And it is set in India. And the main character in this one, Yasmin, she lives in India. And in her community, there is a free library. Um, if she walks down the street, she comes to a special little free library where there's a whole bunch of books to choose from. And her little free library has a really special feature. It has a retired teacher there who is there every day and he likes to help people find the perfect book for them. So that is pretty special, you know, to be able to go to this little library and have somebody help you find just the right book for you. So Yasmin loves going there. Um, she actually is, well, she loves reading. She really, really loves reading. And she's decided that she's going to read one book a day for the rest of her life. So, so she needs a lot of books. Um, so this is the perfect place for her to go. She goes and visits Book Uncle and his free library just about every day. One day though, Yasmin is going to the free library and she gets there and she finds that all the books have been packed up into boxes. And Book Uncle is there and he's looking very, very sad. So Yasmin talks to him and asks what's wrong. And it turns out that the city has decided that in order to give away books, you need to have a permit. And the permits aren't free, you have to pay for them. And Book Uncle, he doesn't have any extra money, so he can't afford to pay for a permit. So he's packing up the books and there'll be no more free books in Yasmin's community. So she's pretty sad about this and she wants to help Book Uncle out. So will she find a way to help him out? Or will Book Uncle and all the books be gone forever? So that's Book Uncle and me. Thank you. All right, the book I'm going to talk about today is called The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. And this is about a boy named Carter. And after Carter's parents disappeared when he was young, he was taken in by a sort of uncle of his named Sly Mike. Um, not exactly a name that inspires a lot of trust, right? Um, any kind of idea what sort of work Sly Mike might do, might do? Well, if you guessed that he has no kind of real job, then you would be exactly right. Sly Mike is a con man, which means he tricks people out of their money, in this case by using magic tricks. Uh, Uncle Sly teaches Carter to become a master of magic tricks too, but Carter does not want to use his skills to rob people, so he runs away and hops a train. The train stops in a small town where Carter can see a carnival from the train yard. He heads that way in search of food, because his stomach is rumbling very loudly, and work, because his stash of shoe money is missing. 
Did Uncle Sly find it before he left? Did he forget to put it in his shoe in the morning? He doesn't know. But what the important part is, he has no money. So at B.B. Basso's carnival, he meets the wonderful illusionist Dante Vernon and five other children with a talent for magic. And it does not take these very bright people long to figure out that all is not as it should be at this carnival. And the owner, B.B. Basso, is planning a major theft. So the six magic misfits devise a plan to bring the criminal operation down using both teamwork and, you guessed it, magic. Um, I will let you in on a little secret about this book that I heard from the publisher, and that is, it isn't just a book. It's a treasure trove of secrets and ciphers and codes and even tricks. When you are reading it, keep your eyes peeled and you will discover more than just a story. You will learn how to make your own magic. And lucky for all of us, this is the first book in a series. So that is The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris, and I think you're going to love it. Hi. So the book I'm going to be talking about today is The Unteachables, written by Gordon Corman. If you've read the Everest Islander Titanic series, this book is by the same author, so you might already know who this author is. Each chapter of this book is written from the point of view of a different character, with chapter one beginning with Kiana. Kiana is new to Greenwich, staying with her dad and stepmother, who she calls Step Monster, while her mom is filming a movie in Utah. Of course, this is just temporary. Kiana has no intention of staying in Greenwich longer than she has to, and will be going back to LA at the end of term, once her mom's finished filming. Zachary Kermit is a burned out teacher whose career and engagement were both ruined 25 years ago after a test cheating scandal and is just killing time doing crossword puzzles, drinking coffee, all of that until he can take early retirement at the end of the year. Dr. Thaddeus, the school district superintendent, still blames Mr. Kermit, however, for the cheating scandal that ruined his reputation as well and is looking for any excuse to fire him before he can take retirement, including assigning him to the unteachables. Now, of course, the school would never call their students that, so the formal name for this group of kids is called the Self-Contained Special 8th Grade Class. The Unteachables are a notorious class of misfits, delinquents, and academic train wrecks who the rest of the teachers at Greenwich Middle School have all but given up on, put in one class altogether, isolated from the rest of school in room 117 until graduation when the school thinks they can become the high school's problem. This year's unteachables include Aldo, who has anger management issues, Parker, who can't read, Barnstorm, a former championship athlete who's benched for the year with an injury, Raheem, the sleep-deprived artist, Mateo, who is too lost in fantasy worlds to pay any attention, Elaine, rhymes with pain, and of course, Kiana, who doesn't even belong in this class or really any class. Only one teacher at Greenwich hasn't given up on the students of room 117, Emma Fountain. Emma is the daughter of Mr. Kermit's ex-fiance and her teaching methods of circle time and rewards charts everyone else thinks are probably better suited to a kindergarten class than seventh and eighth graders. Are the unteachables really unteachable or could a term in room 117 filled with mayhem and destruction also include a shot of redemption for everyone, including Mr. Kermit. Will Mr. Kermit make it to June, or will he be fired before Christmas break? To find out, you will have to read The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. I think you'll really enjoy this book. I know I did. Hi everyone. My name's Lee, and I'm a children's librarian at the Nanaimo Harborfront branch at Vancouver Island Regional Library. The book I'm going to talk about today is called A Wolf Called Wander by Roseanne Perry. In this book, Swift, a young wolf cub, lives with his pack in the mountains, learning to hunt, competing with his brothers and sisters for hierarchy, and watching over a new litter of cubs. But then a rival pack attacks, and Swift and his family must scatter. Alone and scared, Swift must flee and find a new home. The trip is full of peril, though, and Swift encounters forest fires, hunters, 
highways, and hunger before he finally meets a mate and they start a new pack of their own. Inspired by the extraordinary true journey, true story, of a wolf named OR7 from Oregon, who traveled a remarkable 1,600 kilometers across the Pacific Northwest, this is an irresistible tale of survival. It invites readers to experience and imagine what it must be like to be one of the most misunderstood animals on Earth. Also, once you get to the end of this remarkable story, be sure to check out the extra sections at the back. There's a short chapter about OR7 himself. There's a map of his journey. There's general information about wolves and other animals encountered in the book, including a life-size wolf print. And more internet resources at the back for you to check out about wolves. So, be sure to check out A Wolf Called Wander by Roseanne Perry. Hi everybody, my name is Natalie and I'm a librarian at the Courtney Library. I'm here today to talk to you about this amazing book that I read called Inkling and it's written by Kenneth Opal and it's illustrated by Sydney Smith. And I really love this book and I think you will love it too. If you like books that are about creativity and drawing, how to use your imagination, and also have a deeper meaning to them um, they are really well written. This book for you. This book is called Inkling and it's all about this blob of ink that jumps off the pages and comes to life and how it influences the relationship in a family. So the family that we're talking about here, I'll show you a picture, is Ethan dad and his sister Sarah. So there they are at the table. So Ethan's dad is a graphic artist. He's famous. He's written this amazing graphic novel series called Cren. <clears throat> and he is, it was so amazing and popular that he has total writer's block. And he's having a very difficult write, time writing and drawing anything else that will live up to his previous popular uh, graphic novel series. Ethan, on the other hand, has to live up to his dad's reputation because his father is famous. All his friends know who his dad is, so they just assume that he is a great artist and graphic novel writer too, but he actually can't draw. So Ethan has this school project to do, and he has been elected by his teammates to draw all the pictures for the graphic novel project, and he can't draw any of them. So it's pretty stressful. His little sister, Sarah, she's also having a hard time. She really wants a puppy. She doesn't have a puppy. The other thing that all three of them are sad about is that Ethan and Sarah lost their mom. Their dad lost his wife. She passed away, and they're all so lonely without her, and they just don't know what to do or how how uh, to act. So they're struggling. So into the scene comes Inkling. Now Inkling one day magically jumps off the page of his dad's picture, this blob of ink. It's like a little pool of creativity. All he wants to do is eat ink and he also loves Ethan and he wants to help Ethan. So he teaches Ethan how to draw he helps Sarah, he can like become any shape he wants. So when he's with Sarah, he becomes the dog that she wants. And he also helps Ethan's dad to draw. So, and to overcome his writer's block. So this is a picture, In Inkling can become anything he wants. So this is him as this huge gorilla on the wall of their house. Is that scary? <laughs> Um, Inkling is very creative and everyone is so inspired by him and as more and more people in the story find, find out about Inkling, they all um, think of different ways that he can help them with their problems and fix their problems for them and it kind becomes a little bit of a hard time for Ethan because Ethan really needs Inkling's help himself.
and suddenly it's by the end, Inkling disappears, we don't know what's going to happen. So you'll have to read the story to find out how they get Inkling back and how he transforms everyone's lives. So I hope that you found my little talk interesting and I hope you read this book and that you like it. Hey, Reading Link Challenge readers. Our popular cover art challenge from last year is back and there are more great book prizes to be won. Ask your teacher for details and good luck with the challenges.